Secretary. The widespread suspicion is that the Conservatives engineered tonight's vote to expose Labour divisions. If so, the party's not so much airing its dirty linen in public as waving it from the rooftops. While some will vote against, some abstain, others will vote for the Trident programme and the building of four new submarines to carry the nuclear weapons. One of those is the deputy leader Tom Watson, who's written it would be grotesque to abandon the nuclear deterrent now. I asked him, wasn't Emily Thornbury right? This is a trick. Well, she's definitely right that it's an unnecessary vote. It's it's political artifice, really. But we have got a vote on Trident, and, and from my point of view, if you're forced into taking a position, you should take a position. Well, if it's a trick, why, that, fall, why fall for a trick? Well, because, I, you know, the government of the day, led by a new Prime Minister, are putting a vote in the House of Commons to ask us for our view on an independent at-sea nuclear deterrent. And we might know that this is political skullduggery by the Tories, but the country expects us to know our position on strategic defence matters, particularly something so important as our independent nuclear deterrent. And I think we have to take a position on it. Unfortunately, we have a difference of opinion around the shadow cabinet table, which is why there's a free vote. I believe that we should support the Trident programme. Jeremy believes that we shouldn't. So a three-way split with some people's abstaining as well. What does that say about your suitability as an opposition, let alone a potential government? Well, look, we are early into the lifetime of a new government. We are in our policy cycle. Uh, It's not a great position for the Labour Party to be in, to be honest. It doesn't show clarity of thinking, nor do I think it will reassure people that we're strong enough on security matters. But nevertheless, I think the vast majority of Labour MPs will adhere to our manifesto commitment at the last election on national security and we will convince people that the vast majority of people in the Labour Party understand that security is the first duty of government and that's why they'll be voting for Trident tonight. But there could be a general election. We're told there there won't be, but we don't know that for certain. You're virtually unelectable, aren't you? If there is a general election, I have absolutely no doubt that our position will be to support the Trident programme in our manifesto. Our unions support it, their, their union members support it, uh, and that will be the position we put, to, uh, we put to the country. Look, we've got a leadership election going on. People have got to decide who they want to lead us into a general election, and that's down to our members. But why are you pressing this? Because the vote means nothing. It's just a sort of a symbol, isn't it? Well, look, we've already voted to start this programme. The the, the finances have been allocated some time ago. Parliament first voted on this back in 2007. So it clearly is a sort of political construct by the current government. And, look, you know, they're aiming to divide the Labour Party, and if they want to do that, they've probably been successful in it. But nevertheless, if there is a vote, it is our duty and our responsibility to take a position. You want to underscore that division? No, Mark, let me just reassure you, I I don't think this vote is necessary, and I've said that. I said it before the referendum, that uh, I predicted that David Cameron would bring this vote at this time because we knew back then that he was attempting to reunite a very divided Conservative Party. Theresa May has decided to honour his commitment to do that, uh, and it has caused difficulty for us. But nevertheless... You know, I just think you have to take a position if the, if a vote of this magnitude is put in Westminster. To abstain is to not take responsibility, and that is the situation that I strongly believe. What do you think about the role of, of unions in, in this? Well, it's very difficult for union general secretaries. You know, there are tens of thousands of members of Unite and the GMB who work in the defence sector or in civil or military nuclear sector or in aerospace whose jobs depend on this programme going through. And there you have Len McCluskey strongly supporting Jeremy Corbyn, who will be voting against the Trident programme tonight, which will put many defence workers in Unite out of their jobs if he gets his way. So I think there will be consequences for the unions in this as well. You know, there are executive elections coming up in Unite later in the year. If I was a defence worker in Unite and I was reading uh, social media that Unite were about to give Jeremy Corbyn a quarter of a million pounds of my subscriptions, I would be furious today. And I'm sure that that will lend to the division in the whole of the movement as we go forward. You've written that this summer has been like the finale to a big-budget American melodrama. Let's look at uh, Labour's part in that. The union leader, Len McCluskey, said when you withdrew from talks about the future of Mr Corbyn, it was an act of sabotage fraught with peril for the Labour Party. 
Well, it was certainly fraught with peril, but it wasn't an act of sabotage. Uh, you, to go into negotiations, you have to have something to negotiate on. And in media interviews, uh, before he came into the talks, Mr McCluskey made it very clear that Jeremy Corbyn was not leaving. Jeremy has made that clear. I think for our parliamentary party, for whom I was trying to find a compromise position, uh, that, that just meant I couldn't, I couldn't reach a deal. What was your compromise? Well, there were behind-the-scenes talks about whether there could be an negotiated exit for uh, for uh, Jeremy uh, in a way that would have provided a sort of platform for Corbynism, but not necessarily Jeremy Corbyn himself. And that's what I thought was a possibility, but uh, Len McCluskey closed that down, Jeremy himself closed that down in an article in The Guardian, and I just felt I couldn't do it to the other general secretaries to hold out the hope of talks when, effectively, there was no negotiating position we could reach. How many times have you asked Mr Corbyn to resign? I've had private conversations with Jeremy. You know, what I've really said is what you can see is obvious, Mark. Uh, you know, to lead a party in Parliament, you need the authority of your members of Parliament, and 80% of them voted to no confidence him. It's not a situation I wanted, by the way. I didn't want Jeremy to be no confidenced. I didn't want him to stand down as leader. I didn't want Hillary Benn to leave the shadow cabinet. But it is the situation we find ourselves in. And that, unfortunately, means I think we are inevitably heading to a contested election where our members will have to select either Jeremy again or a new leader. If the current leader wins, what will happen to the Labour Party? Well, I'm afraid I can't answer that. I mean, that will be dependent on whether he can form a fully functioning front bench. Right now, he can't do that. I don't know whether arrangements can be made if he does win for that to happen. I think it's unlikely, but I will do my best as deputy leader to f try and find creative and imaginative ways that we can break the current logjam between the current leadership of the party and our parliamentary party. Would you, would you serve as deputy if he wins? Oh, yes, definitely, yeah, yeah. I've got a mandate from the members. My job is to try and hold these things together and, um, you know, I would definitely serve... Remember, I've not resigned from the front bench either. I'm still would a you member do of the that? Shadow would you, Cabinet. Would you, from the, would you resign from the front no. bench? So is there a danger of the Labour Party splitting? I doubt that very much. I read in the papers that uh, this may happen, but uh, people have only got to look at our recent history to see how, uh, how unrewarding that is for the working people we're trying to represent. So uh, I think it is more likely that you'd have a very unhappy Labour Party rather than a split Labour Party. How can you, in a general election, ask people to vote for you, which would mean Mr Corbyn becoming Prime Minister, when three-quarters or more of the MPs say he's not up to it, not up to being leader of the opposition? The simple answer to that is not easily, but that is for our members to decide. You know, when they vote in this leadership election coming, the question they have to ha ask themselves is who is most likely to win for Labour at a general election? Tell them what you see as the consequences of voting for Jeremy Corbyn. It is down to them to make their decision who they vote for. For me, I will respect that decision and honour the mandate that the, whoever is elected in that, in that uh, election gets. But, you know, I also don't want to try and hide the fact how difficult it is going to be if Jeremy is re-elected. You know, I cannot be certain that we will, form, we will be able to form a front bench again if he does win, but I'll do my best to sort that out. Labour's Deputy Leader Tom Watson.